In this video, we're going to look at inference of two proportions. We've already done inference of one proportion, that is to say we've done confidence intervals and hypothesis testing of one proportion. Now we're going to look at two proportions. And when I say two proportions, I mean we're going to be comparing these two proportions, taking two samples, looking at the sample proportions of each, and seeing, well, if I compare these two sample proportions, what does that tell me about the comparison of the population proportions? Okay? So in order to do this, uh, first, let's take a look at what we know about inference of one proportion. Okay, what do we know? We know that we have three conditions that we always have to meet. Random da data gathering, independence, and is n big enough? Okay? Uh, the way that we do independence is we check the 10% rule. That is to say, we make sure that our sample size is not bigger than 10% of our population. If, if it gets bigger than 10% of our population, then the fact that we are sampling without distribution becomes problematic uh, and uh, we, we no longer have a Bernoulli trials, which means we can't, uh, we can't uh, our whole model kind of falls apart. Okay, and then uh, is n big enough? The whole purpose of that is to, uh, to make sure that the normal model is, uh, is appropriate. Okay, and with uh, single uh, proportion inference, uh, the way that we would check out to see if n was big enough is by seeing is np bigger than 10 and is nq bigger than 10. If both of them are bigger than 10, we're good to go. Okay? So if those three conditions are met, then what we have is p hat, our sample proportion, and uh, p hat is a random variable. It's a random variable with a normal distribution. The expected value of p hat is p p being the population proportion, and the standard deviation of p hat is the square root of pq over n. Now this is all review. You already know this, okay? I'm just refreshing your memory, okay? Now, we use this distribution when we're performing hypothesis tests and when we do confidence intervals. For a hypothesis test, uh, well, that, that is generally the, the null hypothesis. Uh, but uh, uh, for, now for a confidence interval, we have to do something slightly different. For a confidence interval, we don't know what p is. And so the problem about uh, not knowing what p is, is you can't calculate a standard deviation of p hat. Because there's p right there. So what we have to do instead is calculate the standard error. The standard error is a, uh, uh, it's an estimate of the standard deviation of the sample statistic. Uh, and all you do there is you substitute, instead of using uh, p, you use p hat, and instead of using q, you use q hat. Okay? So, uh, in order to calculate a confidence interval, we use a standard error to approximate the standard deviation, and uh, so the margin of error is z star, if you remember, that's the critical value, times the standard error of p hat, so the interval goes from p hat minus that margin of error to p hat plus that margin of error. Okay, so that's that's uh, uh, inference of one proportion. So now let's take a look at the inference of two proportions. Okay, so we're going to use everything we know about the inference of one proportion, and we use three more facts. Okay, fact one: the sum or difference of two normally distributed random variables is itself a normally distributed random variable. Okay. Rule number or fact number two. The difference, the expected value of the difference of random variables is the difference of the expected values, okay? So the mean of the difference is the difference of the means. And fact number three, the variance of the difference is the sum of the variances. We saw that when we were looking at sampling distributions, okay? That, what, that the, uh, uh, if you have two random variables and you look at the difference between those two random variables, uh, the variance of that difference takes on more uh, variability and it, it is the sum of the variance of those two random variables. Okay? So, what does that bring us to? Well, it brings us to uh, uh, this uh, position right here. That when you're comparing two proportions and you're looking at the difference between two sample proportions, uh, you have two different samples, right? Size N1 and size N2. The samples don't have to be the same size. They can be totally different sizes. That's okay. Now, we still have to meet conditions, just like with the one proportion inference. Uh, and the conditions are basically the exact same. 
random data gathering, independence, and, uh, uh, and making sure that N1 and N2 are big enough. Now, random data gathering, that's just like before. Okay? You, uh, you try to get a simple random sample uh, or something as close to it, and if, uh, if the, this is the result of an experiment, you have as randomized a design as possible. Okay, now for independence, uh, your 10% rule still applies. If you're taking uh, samples from two different populations, then you need to make sure that your N1, your sample from the first population, is no bigger than 10% of that population, and you need to make sure that N2, the sample that you take from the second population, is no bigger than 10% of, uh, of that population. Um, if you're taking, now if you're running an experiment and you're taking one sample from one population and then you're cutting it in half and randomly distributing people into group one or group two, well now really what you've done is you, you've just taken one sample. So what you do is you add N1 and N2 together and you say, I need to make sure that together they're not bigger than 10% uh, uh, of my entire population. Okay. Uh, then you have to check and make sure that N1 and N2 are big enough. Uh, now in order to do that, we're no longer saying what's N times P and what's N times Q. We're saying what's N1 times P, that should say P1, and what's N1 times Q1, what's N1, N2 times P2, and NQ times two, Q, N2 times Q2. Make sure that all of those are bigger than 10. Okay. Uh, once those conditions are met, then we have these three randomly distributed normal, uh, normal random variables. P1 hat, okay, and this is just like P hat from, uh, uh, from the one proportion inference. The expected value is P1, the population proportion, and the standard deviation of P1 hat is the square root of P1, Q1 over N1, okay, just like before. P2, same thing just like P1. Now let's look at the difference. The difference between P1 hat and P2 hat, the expected value of that difference is just going to be the difference of the expected values, okay? Which means the difference of the population proportions. The standard deviation of, uh, of those uh, um, sample proportions is going to be the sum, well, let me back off, the variance of the difference will be the sum of the variances. So basically in order to get the variance of uh, P1 hat and the variance of P2 hat, you just remove the radical sign, okay? You square it and there, therefore the square root sign goes away. And so you end up with this fraction plus this fraction. And so when you take the square, the standard deviation of that difference, it's going to be the square root of those two fractions, okay? Just think about it for a second and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Now, Let's look at how uh, hypothesis tests work. Good news. The null hypothesis, not a problem. It's always the exact same thing. The null hypothesis is P1 equals P2. The null hypothesis is always going to be those two proportions are exactly the same. Those two population proportions are exactly the same. Okay? So what that means is that P1 minus P2 would be zero. Okay? The alternative hypothesis is going to be one of three things. Either P1 is bigger than P2, P1 is smaller than P2, or two-tailed test, P1 and P2 are not the same thing. They are not equal to each other. Okay? Now, you'll notice that with one proportion inference, uh, we had an assumed value for P, and so we could calculate the standard deviation. Well, this time we don't. Okay? This time we have absolutely no assumption about the actual value of P1 or P2. All we're saying is they're the same thing. So what we have to do is we have to use the standard error instead of the standard deviation for a good estimate of uh, the standard deviation. Okay? So um, what we have is our null hypothesis says the expected value of P1 hat minus P2 hat is zero because it's that. And also, according to the null hypothesis, the standard deviation of P1 hat is going to be, uh, well, hang on a second, uh, well, that's true no matter what, but uh, the, the uh, standard deviation of P1 hat minus P2 hat will be P1 
PQ over N1 and plus PQ over N2. Um, let me back up for a second. Uh, the null hypothesis says that P1 equals P2. So instead of referring to them as P1 and P2, let's just call them P, okay? Because it's the same number, it's the same uh, proportion anyway. So let's, let's stop using the subscripts for a second and just call them P. So that's why I left off the subscripts here. Uh, the standard deviation of P1 hat minus P2 hat, according to the null hypothesis, is going to be PQ over N1 plus PQ over N2. And a lot of times you'll see this written like this where you factor out the PQ. So it's just the square root of PQ times 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2. Okay? Now, now we can say, since we don't have an assumed value for P, instead of the standard deviation, we use the standard error. So we basically, we're going to take this exact formula here and just replace it with, with uh, hats over the P's and Q's. Okay? Now, how do we... Uh, how do we estimate p hat? Uh, you don't use p1 hat and you don't use p2 hat. If p1 and p2 are exactly the same thing, if it's just one proportion, then really what I ought to do is I ought to count up all of my successes and divide it by all of my sample. In other words, I'm going to say the best, the best estimate of p that I can get is going to be p hat, where p hat is x1 plus x2, x1 and x2 are, of course, the number of successes that you get the, in your sample, divided by n1 plus n2, okay? Divided by the sum of your sample sizes, okay? Now, uh, with an interval, it's really pretty straightforward, okay? We can't assume anything about p1 or p2 this time, okay? And so what that means is we have to go back to our prior definition of what uh, uh, the standard deviation of, p, uh, of p1 hat minus p2 hat was, and, uh, and then use the standard error instead. So what we get is the standard error of p1 hat minus p2 hat is the square root of p1 hat q1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat q2 hat over n2. Okay? So the standard error for hypothesis testing is a little different from the standard error for uh, confidence intervals, and that's because with hypothesis testing, we're assuming that those p's are the same thing with confidence intervals we don't. Okay? The z star, it's exactly the same z star that we used when we were doing one, uh, one proportion inference. Alright? So now, in the next video, we're going to look at a couple of examples and how you actually use this stuff.